the two angles of a triangle are 40 and 110, then any of the following measurement cannot be an exterior angle of the triangle. Is it A, B, C, or D? Can you open your mic, Siba? Yes. Yes. So in order for me to solve this problem, I have to draw a triangle. Okay. And then I have to form three exterior angles, isn't it? Yeah. So if this is 40, so what's how what's the measurement of the exterior angle? 140. 140. So this is wrong, isn't it? Yeah. If this is 110, so what's the measurement of the exterior angle? 70. 70. So this is wrong. So what's left? 140, 110 and 40. So what's left here for the third 30. angle? It's what? 30, isn't it? Yeah. So what's the exterior? Uh, it's going to be 150. 150. So this is wrong because we can't be. So 160 can't be an exterior angle. How about this one? So the idea what is... Did, what I did was... 15 over 5 is equal to 3. So then 18 over x, uh, 18 over 3 is equal to 6. Yeah, okay. Gotcha, gotcha. So this is going to be uh, 3, as you just said. So the idea is x is going to be 6. Yes, you're good. Okay. Any question about this one? Thank you, Ron. Here we go. So domain, the idea is um, for square root, what's underneath the square root can't be negative. So it has to be greater than to zero. That means uh, two X is greater than or equal to three. That means X is greater than or equal to three over two. So this is one condition. The second condition here, X minus five can't be zero. So that means X is equal to five doesn't equal to five, okay? So you have two conditions. So the answer is C. There is one for you to practice. So what do you think of this one? Uh, so it's uh, C. Um, why? Uh, because, uh, no, sir, it's, uh, I think it's uh, B. B, why? Why it's B? Because sir, for the because uh, the two x minus three is, is in the denominator, so it cannot be uh, cannot be zero, and yes. what's underneath the square root cannot it has to be greater than or equal to zero, isn't it? Yes, sir. Yeah, but since it cannot be zero and greater than or equal to zero, so I can put these together to be two x minus three is greater than zero, isn't it? Because it it's, has to be, can't be negative, and it can't be zero, so it has to be positive. So it has to be greater than zero, isn't it? Yes, sir. Yeah, so for this one, 2x is greater than a 3. So x is greater than a 3 over 2. So the answer is B. Make sense? Because, um, for this one, uh, they ask you to find uh, 2a minus B. This is a common question in the test. 2a minus b. So the idea is you have to find the scalar multiplication, which is 2 times a minus b. So it's, it's the same idea. If you want to sub add or subtract matrices, you take the same elements together. So a with w, you add them together or subtract them together. You do the same operation, okay? So as we just said that a, i, j, you add or subtract with B, I, J, okay? So the idea here, you have to find 2A minus B. So this is 2A minus B. This is going to be 2A, which is A, A 2, 0, 1, 5, minus B, which is uh, negative 1, 1, negative 2, 3, okay? Okay, Manar, we'll see now if it's A or B. So the idea is when you multiply now, now here's one thing. When you multiply a number with a matrix, like let's say uh, three times one, two, three, four. When you multiply a number with a matrix, the, 
this is going to be to multiply the number with the all elements of the matrix. So this is going to be three times one, three times three, three times two, three times four. So this is going to be three, nine, six, 12. Make sense? So if you multiply a number with a matrix, you multiply it with the everything inside the matrix. So this is the first idea. So for this one here, this is going to be four, two, zero, 10, minus negative one, one, three, negative two. Now, when you subtract or add, you take elements with the same position. So this is going to be four minus minus one, which is five, two minus three, which is minus one, zero minus one, which is minus one, 10 minus minus two, which is 12. So the answer is yes, A. Here we go. Um, now with determinants, they will ask you to find, this is also a typical question of SAAT, um, the area of a triangle. They give you the vertices and they ask you about the area. So there is a formula, which is this one. If you have the vertices, one, two, three, vertices of a triangle, to find it, it's, one half the determinant. This is the three by three determinant. Okay, so to so apply this one here, so the area, the area is going to be one half. Um, the first point here we have it. Let me just um, say this is the first point, second, and this is third. Okay, so this is going to be negative two, two, zero, because you start with x this is the x's and then you start with y so this is going to be four four negative two and then because you start then with these y's here then it's only one 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 and you're done okay so then it's one 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 and you're done Okay, how to find the determinants of a three by three matrix? It's, it's the same, but with this one, we're going to have a three primary diagonals and three secondary diagonals. So the idea is going this way. So this is the first primary diagonal. Okay, so to find the rest, you have to repeat the first column, which is negative two, two, zero. And then you repeat the second column, which is four, four, negative two. Then this is going to be the second primary diagonal. This is the third one. So this is going to be one half. You multiply negative two times four times one. This is negative eight plus four times one times zero, zero plus one times two times negative two. This is negative four, okay? And then you put a negative sign and then you use the secondary diagonal, which is, um, let me use this color here. This is the secondary diagonal, which is this one. One, and here is the second one, and you have to be careful, okay? And this is the third one. Okay, so for the first one, one times four times zero, which is zero, plus negative two times one times negative two, which is four, okay? And then four times two times one, which is eight, okay? Make sense? Make sense? So then this is going to be one half. For the first one here, this is negative 12. And the second one is also negative 12, but we're going to use, uh, because it's area, it has to be positive. So this is going to be negative 12, but since it's area, the answer is going to be 12. So the answer is 12. Make sense? So even if you get a negative answer, you just change it to positive because it's an area. 
and area never being negative. Okay. So this is, how about this one? Or hard, isn't it? Easy. So for the first one, this is I to the 12. So I know this is going to be one. Okay, done. So this is one. I to the 13, this is I to the 12 times I to the one, isn't it? Isn't it? Because 13 is a 12 plus one. So this is one times I. So this is going to be I. So we're done. This is I. So how about to the 18th? So the I to the 18th, this is going to be I to the 16th times I squared, isn't it? So what's I squared is negative one. So this is plus negative one. So the whole thing is going to be these two cancels. So the answer is going to be, make sense? So what's the idea? The idea is whenever, whenever you have a complex number in the denominator, you just rationalize the, de the denominator. You just get rid of the complex numbers from the de denominator. So for example here, if I have like three over i, for example, this one, in order for me to get rid of the i in the denominator, I just multiply by the complex conjugate. So I multiply by i over i, isn't it? To get rid of from the, um, actually negative i because it's the complex conjugate. So this one is going to be uh, negative three i over, what's i times i? Negative one, but this is negative, so this is one. So the answer is negative three i. Make sense? For simplification, first you get this one. So what's x squared plus three x minus 18? That means this one can be written as Two things okay so the sum of two numbers is a three and the product is negative 18 so this is negative positive so this is going to be six and three sorry it has to be negative three plus six isn't it because uh the sum is positive so this is going to be there we go this is plus this is minus so this is for the first one okay I, I factor the first one. So here we have x over x plus three, x minus four. And then I have a division sign. So I can change the division sign to a multiplication. And then I use the reciprocal for this fraction. So this is going to be x for three, x or times x plus six. Make sense? When I change the sign from division to multiplication, I use the reciprocal. Now I can simplify. So um, 3x goes with 3x. Uh, x plus 6 goes with x plus 6. x goes with x. So I left with uh, x minus 3 over x minus 4. So what's the answer? Is it A, B, C, or D? Yeah, so mm -hmm. uh, first I factored the first part. So it would be X minus seven and X plus three divided by, since it's a perfect square, it's X plus five and X minus five. Mm -hmm. Good. And then we multiply by the opposite, so it'd be x minus five over x times x minus seven, and then cancel out x minus seven, uh, and the x plus, sorry, the x minus five, and we're left with x plus three over x times x plus five. Yes, you're right, easy. This is x plus three over x, times x plus five. So the answer is uh, D, isn't it? Which of the following is a factor of, for this polynomial? So what's the idea? What's the idea to say a point is a factor for this polynomial? The idea is if you plug in the number 
and you get zero, then it's a factor. Okay, so for a point to be a factor, that means if you plug in the point inside the polynomial and you get zero, then it's a factor. So for this one here, it's asking which one of these points is a factor. So to get the points, that means this one is x is equal to negative three. This one means x is equal to one. This one x is equal to two. This x is equal to zero. Okay, so this is the first step. This is the point. So to see which one is a factor, you just plug in the number the values so let's just start with the first one a let's see so a is going to be a with negative three okay so this is going to be negative three squared plus four negative three squared minus negative three minus six okay so and it's once negative you... three to the power of three not two yeah three okay so this is going to be uh, 27 negative with negative so this is 27 uh, this one is going to be 9 times 4 which is 36 minus this is also plus a 3 minus 6 is this is going to be 0 what do you think this is can't be 0 isn't it so this is can't be 0 because plus 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 minus 6 so a is wrong let's just double check with b okay b now so f with one, this is easy, negative one, the third cube plus four, one squared minus one minus six. So this is going to be negative one uh, plus four, negative one, negative six. Is this is going to be zero? Can't be zero, yeah? Because negative, negative, negative plus six, so this is can't be zero. So this is wrong also. Let's just see, um, see now, okay? So to do number C, F with two, so this is going to be negative uh, two to the third plus four, two squared minus, and as you can see, I use parentheses. You have to use parentheses when you plug in numbers. So this is going to be negative eight plus uh, two squared, which is four, four times four, which is 16 minus two minus six. Okay, so minus negative eight, negative two, and negative six, which is negative 16. With 16, this is zero. Then this is the answer. This is a factor for this one. Okay, so the, the idea in short, if you want to find if a point is a factor for the polynomial, just plug in the point. If you get zero, then it's a factor. If you're not, then it's not a factor. Okay.